the alley of Tequiza to the glory days at the stick. From who's got it better than us to brick by brick. It's always the 49ers way from off season to game day. Yeah, we talk back. It's the 49ers cut back. It's 49ers Cutback Podcast time. Welcome to the show, everyone. Must win defensive matchups for the 49ers. They're going to have some tough ones against the Cardinals. If they're able to overcome these must win matchups, they have a really good opportunity to play well and defeat the Cardinals. It's a divisional matchup. So every time there is a divisional matchup, you always have to take into account how well both teams know each other. But there's a little bit of a different change coming with Arizona. New offensive coordinator, new defensive coordinator, new look uniforms for the Arizona Cardinals. So the 49ers go in there with some uh, fresh new looks to go against. And I think it's going to be a lot of fun. And I want to go through these matchups and just talk about how the 49ers can counteract what Arizona does well. Arizona just came off a big victory against the Dallas Cowboys, but they also played well in the first halves of their first two games as well, especially against the Giants. They were dominating until the Giants made some second half adjustments and were able to come back. So it's a team that has potential. It's not a team without, you know, playmakers or people that can create on the outside. They have a good set of tight ends, a solid running back. So a lot of fun the Arizona Cardinals are, and the 49ers know what they have to do to win. They know what it takes to defeat a rival in your division. And the 49ers want to make sure they go to 2-0 and in the division. Put themselves in prime position to be able to come away with the NFC West crown. That is one of their keys to this season. Win the NFC West and then get that number one seed and make sure the playoffs run through San Francisco. That is one of the most important things the 49ers have to do this year. Now, this episode, it runs through Bet Online. And with Bet Online, football is back. And Bet Online is your number one information source for all your sports wagering info with all the up to minute stats, news, scores, and matchup breakdowns. Get the latest game odds, spreads, and totals from the NFL and college football at your fingertips with Bet Online's real time updates on statistics, news, and odds. From week one all the way to the college football playoff and Super Bowl, Bet Online gives you access to the best football promotions and contests available anywhere online. Head to the website today or use your mobile device to get in on the action. Remember to use your promo code BELIEVE, B L E A V, in all caps, to receive your 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. Bet online where the game starts. And where the 49ers have to start to be able to slow down this Cardinals offense is got to be dealing with the tight ends. And and why do I start with the tight ends? Well, as far as key matchups, it's probably going to be the Arizona run game. I'm going to talk about that on my game preview show. I think that one's a little bit more difficult to stop. These are winnable matchups I think the 49ers can win at. And you've got a tight end a group that's pretty good. You got Zach Ertz, you got Trey McBride, talented players. Of course, Ertz closer to the end of his career than he is the beginning. But Trey McBride, a guy that's coming on, a young guy emerging. And the 49ers have several ways to go about handling them. Number one, you could always put your safeties, Keshawn Gibson, Tauno Ufonga, put them onto the tight ends and have them locked down. I've seen both of those guys operate in training camp against George Kittle and against talented tight ends. They do a good job. And they just played a very talented tight end as well. So the 49ers know what they're getting themselves into. Ertz has been very successful through his time against the 49ers. And so they are very well equipped to handle what he does. One of the most interesting things the 49ers did against Darren Waller and the New York Giants was not only did they play to Sean Gibson one-on-one in open space against Waller, which should be advantage Waller, at this point in Gibson's career, but they also played Isaiah Oliver one-on-one with Darren Waller. And we had heard Steve Wilkes talk about this before when he talked about having a big nickel or his Buffalo nickel package and his small nickel is that when they played tight ends that had size, 
that had physicality, that were able uh, to create separation against safeties because of that matchup or against smaller corners. What he was talking about, like corners like Diomero Lenore moving inside, was he would play Isaiah Oliver on them. Now, the question marks arose as the 49ers went through preseason. Uh, would Isaiah Oliver still step into that role after a lot of people had concerns? But Isaiah Oliver has improved every single game from the first preseason game all the way until now. He keeps coming into his own. Is he 100% coverage-wise? Does he stop everyone? Absolutely not. No one does. Carverius Ward gets beat sometimes. Hufanga gets beat sometimes. Lenore gets beat sometimes. It's just the way it is. But what he did was he battled, and he had pretty good coverage, including a deep one when they tried to go down the sideline to Waller, and Isaiah Oliver was all over it. So I think Oliver's an option. And one of the reasons that I believe Oliver's an option is because keeping Fred Warner and Dre Greenlaw involved as much as they can in stopping James Conner in the run game is going to be very important. So using Hafonga in the box to help stop the run is important. Using Gibbs in the same way. But I think the 49ers are going to formulate a couple of different ways to maneuver around uh, Zach Ertz and Trey McBride. And if they put in situations where the 49ers have uh, to have their base 4-3 out there, it's going to come down to Hufanga, Gibson, and Warner and Greenlaw to cover the two tight end sets. But if they put the 49ers in nickel, then that's when I think we can see Isaiah Oliver cover one of these guys. Because the truth is, Isaiah Oliver is a little bit of a mismatch problem uh, for the 49ers when they have to go against Rondell Moore in the slot. If Rondell Moore is playing the slot for Arizona, I have worries about him being able to create separation against Isaiah Oliver. I'm not a huge fan of that matchup. So maybe in those cases, Lenore goes inside. Uh, if Ambry Thomas is back healthy, maybe they go back to Ambry. Maybe they slide Isaiah Oliver back outside, which he was originally drafted to do. It's one of those ones that's interesting to see how Steve Wilkes wants to handle the differences between playing Isaiah Oliver against big tight ends and the big receiver like Michael Wilson compared to playing him in the slot against Hollywood Brown, against Rondell Moore, guys with great speed. They also have uh, you know, Greg Dorch and then Zach Paschal as well. So they have talented guys there that could create separation in the slot. So interesting the way that they're going to use Isaiah Oliver not just against the tight ends, but also against those slot receivers and how much they use Hufanga in coverage. There was lots of times in this game against the New York Giants that Deshaun Gibson would come up and play in the box or cover out with Hufanga handling the deep third. It's not to say Hufanga didn't come up, but I felt like the 49ers broke some tendencies with how much Hufanga played the deep third and played back compared to Deshaun Gibson. It was normally the inverse. Nufonga had talked about early in the year that those two talk and they can both play either position, so it's not a big change for them. So they go back and forth. Nufonga decides who's going to go where, and Nufonga so far hasn't missed. Uh, so I'm optimistic about this matchup, but it's an interesting one. Who's covering the tight ends? And then you have to make sure you do a good job because if you start really get selling out to stop the run, with Warner and Greenlaw and maybe Hufanga, you have to make sure these tight ends don't get going because there will be voids created over the middle of the field for these guys to be able to get going. And that would be high percentage passes for Joshua Dobbs. You can't allow that. And then on the inverse, when you get to situations when they're in 11 personnel and they have three wide receivers on the field, or even if they spread it out further and get four or five wide receivers on the field, you need to make sure that Isaiah Oliver can have a matchup that fits his skill set, and I wonder if he's able to handle Rondell Moore, Hollywood Brown, and those guys. I think a, a, a Pasquale would be a nice matchup for him in the slot, uh, but the other ones with their speed and quickness and quick area or short area quickness, it, it could be a little bit more difficult. Of course, he could always step up to the challenge and handle it, and in that case, I would feel even better about Isaiah Oliver as the San Francisco 49ers nickel corner moving forward. If you're watching this video, like and subscribe to the channel. If you haven't already, if you're listening on audio platform, 40 yards cut back on believe, please give it a five star rating. Really appreciate everyone that's been subscribing to the channel, uh, giving likes, all the new listeners on the audio platform. You guys truly are the best. So let's talk about another matchup involving a wide receiver, and that's Hollywood Brown. And I want to put Hollywood Brown emphasis against Diameter Lenore. I think Charvarius Ward, even though there's a speed element to Hollywood Brown, where he can absolutely run. Uh, past pretty much you know any cornerback in this league, 
I think that the matchup with Diomar Lenore needs to be highlighted because Lenore has been getting penalized this season uh, for little grabs. I think they've been ticky tack, but he still is getting flagged. So I wonder what it will look like against a smaller wide receiver. Will Diomar Lenore be able to match him stride for stride? Will he be able uh, to stay on him? Because one of the things that happened to Ambry Thomas early in the season was he was giving so much cushion that these teams were breaking off their routes and catching the ball underneath. And of course, we know Ambry Thomas doesn't drive on the football as good as Lenore. But what I'm curious is, can Lenore uh, take away that deep pass from Hollywood Brown, all the while still being able to drive on footballs where he breaks it off underneath and, and really get on him and force him to make contested catches? I think that's an interesting part of this game because the 49ers will put those cornerbacks on the outside, even though it's not man coverage all the time, they still run uh, quarters. They'll run cover three. And those on deep routes are still basically one-on-one -on -one situations for your corner. So I want to see how Diomero Lador navigates through dealing with Hollywood Brown speed. And if Arizona tries to break some of the tendencies of their normal offense, we saw the Rams do this against the 49ers. Normally, the 49ers know the depth at which a receiver in a system will break out, break off the route uh, and do something underneath. And then you you know that, hey, you can drive on the football. You don't have to flip your hips and run vertically with the, with the receiver. The problem was the Rams broke it off two yards uh, deeper than they normally did. So early in the game, they got Ambry Thomas to flip his hips and run, which helped create separation for Tutu Atwell and Puka Nakua. And then they also did it to... A uh, Charverius War. That's when I really saw, hey, this is what the Rams are doing. It's it's very smart. They've changed their depth at which they're going to break things off, make it difficult for the corner. So the 49ers are going to have to get a good feel with that with these quick receivers because these guys do have the ability to go vertical and they have the ability to break it off. They're good route runners. Um, they're not special in contested catches. So anything tight for 49ers cornerback should mean. Uh, pass breakups, and opportunities for interceptions. Plus, Joshua Dobbs is very careful with the football and not willing to take a lot of chances where the ball could be a turnover. He's got a defensive-minded coach, so it's about protecting the football and playing good defense, running the football. And that's what Arizona kind of does. So if you can make things look tight for Dobbs, he'll hold on to the football or he'll try to scramble. And I think that would be good for the 49ers. But and it comes down to Diomar Lenore recognition. And he didn't really play as much outside in the first two weeks. Ambry Thomas, of course, played the first half against Pittsburgh. Second half, I thought Diomar Lenore played uh, out of his mind. So that's something to watch, too. Demo versus Hollywood Brown. I think that's the main one as far as their receivers go. I'm not really worried about it. I mean, there is one uh, size difference for Arizona where they have Michael Wilson out of Stanford, and he's got this size to be able to tower over Diamond Lenore. But I've seen Lenore play against big physical uh, players before. I've seen him go run stride for stride with Darren Waller. I've seen him play against DK Metcalf. He, As long as he stays on the hip pocket, it's not a lot to worry about there. And when it comes to Michael Wilson, he's not the fastest to be able to create separation against Lenore. He does it more through uh, using his physicality. Uh, the next one is Josh Dobbs running. So uh, Joshua Dobbs, I just brought up the fact that if you can make a hold on to the football, you could probably get to him. Well, he also can use his legs. And I think there's a manner in which Arizona is going to have to get Joshua Dobbs involved in the run game. I think that they're going to have to run some read option, be willing to allow him to carry the ball against the 49ers because the 49ers run defense is so good that if they make Arizona one-dimensional, it's going to be very difficult. Now, Dobbs has completed 72% of his passes this season. But that is a run game that's been successful in every game that they've played. James Conner, the run game, has consistently made plays. Last week, Rondell Moore made a big run as well. So you've seen consistency from the run game. When you see that consistency, it allows things to open up. It allows play actions. It allows you to move the pocket, roll out, and find open lanes and open looks. What will happen, though, if the 49ers stop the Arizona Cardinals run game or at least slow it down, force third and longs? Well, what's going to have to happen is they're going to have to change their run game a little bit. And one way I think they could do it is read option. Try to take advantage of the 49ers' aggressiveness with their outside edge rushers. Nick Bosa, Cleveland Farrell, Drake Jackson, make sure that you can take advantage of them 
And that way they can't be as hyper aggressive at getting down the line of scrimmage and helping on the run game going away from them. So by freezing them, it helps them there. It also helps in the passing game because now they freeze on run plays and they interrupt their rush where they're not getting full speed up the field toward Joshua Dobbs. So I look for that to be a part of the, the game plan this week. I was a little surprised the Giants didn't run more of that with Daniel Jones. They've been highly successful with that in the past, uh, but it just didn't work out for them. And the 49ers took advantage of getting after Daniel Jones, pressure rate through the roof, stuffed the run, only allowed 29 yards on the ground. So I know the run game is going to be big, and I'm going to get into that even deeper as we get into the week. Uh, but Joshua Dobbs' ability in the run game is significant. It's also very significant in him throwing the football, uh, but also him scrambling. So what you have to worry about this week is pass rush integrity. Uh, pass rush lanes are so important in keeping a very talented athletic quarterback within the pocket where he can't get outside, hurt you with his legs, or extend a play and be, come up with a big vertical play down the field. Those are backbreakers. And so the 49ers have to make sure they handle that. Now, how do they do that? Well, first off, you just have your guys stay in their lanes, uh, which means less stunts, less defensive line games. Uh, you you play in your lane and you just try to get some nice pressure, internal pressure by pushing defense or offensive linemen back, you know, outside pressure by not rushing too far upfield, but also not getting caught going inside. The other way that Steve Wilkes can help uh, the defensive line with that integrity is to blitz a linebacker uh, or a defensive back off the edge by adding an extra player to the rush, you can have now five guys be able to kind of keep their lanes and in integrity and make it difficult for Dobbs. And I think that's something I could see the 49ers doing early. So it's going to be very important to keep him within the pocket uh, to make sure you make him beat you with his arm. He's been efficient, but now get after him, put pressure on, collapse the pocket, and see what Joshua Dobbs does when all hell breaks loose because Bosa, Hardgrave, Armstead, and Drake Jackson or Farrell are coming for you. I think those are going to be some things I'm interested in watching. So the 49ers are going to have to make sure, even though they like being hyper-aggressive, that they also are very tuned in to where uh, Joshua Dobbs is and how he's moving through the pocket to make sure he's not able to beat them with his legs. With the amount of zone coverage that the 49ers run as well, that will help them be able to get on Dobbs and not allow big plays. This man coverage, you're turned, you're running, you have your back to the quarterback. Anyone that watched the Colin Kaepernick days knows that's when the 49ers had great success with his scrambling. Green Bay Packers, Dom Capers were unwilling to adjust, and he just kept running. So I think the 49ers know what they got to do. They've gotten better and better against these types of quarterbacks, and they're going to have to prove it against a very, very talented uh, Joshua Dobbs. As far as athleticism, he looks good accuracy right now i think the 49ers might bring him back to earth a little bit uh but he's definitely a tough matchup for any defense i want to talk now about drake jackson and cleveland farrell against the offensive tackles for arizona and i want to talk about it for a couple of reasons we we talked right now about pass you know rush lane integrity which is important uh, drake jackson's got tremendous speed we saw it in week one where he got three sacks where he could be able to chase down a, a quarterback from behind. He's got that athletic ability. He's able to run down Kenny Pickett. Uh, so you see those types of situations. Uh, but there's a couple of things these guys really have to do this week. First off, they have to be able to uh, get a pass rush when they are singled up. So this is something that Samson Ebicom, Charles Amenehu have had to deal with as well, is there are going to be situations where you are the only guy on the defensive line that is singled up in a one-on-one -on -one situation, and you have to win. And I don't think we've seen consistent winning from those two guys. Uh, they have won, but I want to see consistent winning. That was one of the things that made the 2019 defense so spectacular was Bosa uh, and D Ford could win on one-on-ones. They decided to double D Ford, Bosa won. They decided to double team Bosa, D Ford won. And it was just very impactful. And the Buckner, Armstead were the guys who could win on the inside as well. And a lot of times what happened was Armstead would be the guy who did not get the double, and then he had 10 sacks on the season. So you can see that that's how it has to work. When somebody gets singled up, they have to win. So Drake Jackson and Cleveland Farrell have to continue to develop so that way they can win these situations. 
They also have to worry about where they're going to be with their rush lane integrity. Uh, but they're going against, you know, two pretty good tackles. This guy's both played good last week, DJ Humphreys and Paris Johnson. And we know that with Bosa moving from side to side, they're going to have matchups against both of these tackles. So they're going to have to make sure they go in there and execute. Uh, but it's falling on them with Hargrave playing so good on the inside, with two sacks already from an interior defensive line. Other teams' willingness to double team Eric Armstead. It, it just it just kind of relegates it to the fact that we're going to have to see these two guys step up. And they're also going to have to step up against the run. And Cleveland Farrell has done a really good job of setting the edge against a lot of teams. He's been setting the edge, turning plays in. He also did a very good job of setting the edge against Pittsburgh Steelers, the Rams. He was running in there full speed, especially against the Rams, and taking on pullers that were trying to kick him out. So he was doing a good job of blowing up traps, and I've liked what he's done in the run game. And so I, I feel pretty comfortable with him. Drake Jackson had some moments against the Giants where he looked really good stopping the run, but you didn't really see you know, the Giants be, show conviction with the run game. And so I think the case here is the 49ers you know, are going to see a Arizona Cardinals team that shows conviction, and they'll just continue to run the football. This is what they like to do. They like to establish a run game, and the rest of their offense is kind of predicated off that. So Drake Jackson, Cleveland Farrell are going to be a big part of this football game. They have to make sure they execute. They have to make sure they set the edge and stop the run. And then on passing downs, they take advantage of being one-on-one -on -one with these tackles. I think they're going to put these tackles on an island against Jackson and Farrell. If Jackson and Farrell win, the 49ers are going to win because they're going to get multiple sacks because you just can't consistently double everyone on the defensive line. And with the 49ers' willingness to blitz, uh, you're going to get opportunities for one-on-ones for somebody. And if you have a really athletic linebacker or safety that are getting involved in the blitz or the games, that's where you can have success. And that's my next one. Here you have Steve Wilkes returning to Arizona, not really going to Arizona, but playing Arizona. And he's got a lot of history with the organization. Steve Wilkes has motivation. I'm sure he will say it's no big deal. It's not going to be you know, anything he thinks about. Uh, but the truth of the matter is this team is going to be highly motivated to play for Steve Wilkes in this game. And Steve Wilkes is going to want to be aggressive with the Arizona Cardinals. He's going to want to bring blitzes. Last week against the New York Giants, he blitzed 11 times. I won't be surprised to see that number go up for a couple of reasons. If you blitz at a higher rate, those run blitzes can help you stop the run. Number two, by blitzing, you can keep uh, Joshua Dobbs inside the pocket. And number three, by blitzing, you can get to Joshua Dobbs, make him feel uncomfortable. And if you have third and longs because you're stopping the run, it means you're getting off the field. And I think using those guys who are hyper-athletic to help set the edge is going to be important. So what do I mean? Blitzing a Talano Ufong off the edge means you've got another really quick guy out there to help uh, keep and contain Joshua Dobbs in the pocket. If you blitz Trey Greenlaw off the edge, he's another guy that can keep him inside the pocket. You need athleticism on the field with a very quick quarterback. Also, Fred Warner. Fred Warner has been one of the best at using twists in the blitz scheme. He has been a part of the games on the front, and they have a really good chemistry right now. He's talked a lot about how good this defensive line is, about creating lanes for him to run through on these apparent sacks. And it's just been so big. The one against Pickett in week one, the hole was so big created by the defensive line for him by getting the off offensive lineman out of the way that he almost went too wide and allowed a area for Pickett to get, get free. So, or I'm sorry, Matthew Stafford. Uh, so that was in week two. So I think it's, it's interesting to watch how Steve Wilkes goes about the games on the front line with his defensive line. Will he be hyper aggressive uh, with the blitz? Of course, he has blitzed less this year than I thought he was going to. I thought he was going to be more aggressive, but it's worked. Uh, his game plan so far, week one against Pittsburgh, week three against the Giants were completely on par, fantastic. Week two, it was all about his adjustments against the Rams and taking away what they did well. I think it's been a very good performance for Steve Wilkes, and I think aggressiveness could be important, especially where you're going to have an advantage along the defensive line against Arizona's offensive line. I think Arizona's offensive line is good. 
I think they're really good as far as run blocking, but there are some situations where you can have success if they face third and long. So those are some matchups. I think the 49ers must win on defense. Of course, there's key matchups that are going to be coming your way on the game preview show. Uh, so be on the lookout for that. That's going to be coming out here pretty soon. And you guys can uh, get an idea of what exactly I think the 49ers need to do to stop the Arizona Cardinals run game. Cause I think that's a definite key in this football game. So can the 49ers find a way to stop the Arizona Cardinals tight ends all the while making sure they don't get matched up with Isaiah Oliver uh, on Rondell Moore on the, in the slot. Will that be a matchup that they can't win? Demo against Hollywood Brown, of course. That's interesting. Greg Jackson and Cleveland Farrell uh, playing against Dobbs. Dobbs using his legs in the run game and scrambling. It's going to be something they figure out. And then Steve Wilkes using the blitz to keep Joshua Dobbs off balance and in the pocket, I think is going to be super important for this matchup. So thank you guys so much for coming through and checking out this episode, talking about 49ers defensive matchups. They uh, must win. Um, with all things, you know, uh, I really appreciate everyone that's been showing support also on the Red and Bold show over on the PSF app. Download the app. You can come listen to me and Mark Adams. We did a live show earlier. And then on Sunday, we're going to be calling the game. We're going to be giving our commentary as the 49ers play the Arizona Cardinals. So come check that out. Check that out as well. And just like always, like, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Um, if you're listening on audio platform, get a five-star rating. I really appreciate it so much. You guys are the best. Uh, this episode, of course, brought to you by Bet Online, where the game starts. So thanks, everyone, for coming through. I'll catch you guys on the next one. Until then, stay safe. And remember the right way is always the 49ers way.